Today I am very excited to be reviewing and testing the Hikari 2022 Hyperstar LED headlight. Now many of you have asked for this test, and so now you're going to get it. Does the Hyperstar live up to the hype? Well, we're going to find out. Hello everyone and welcome to Car Light Reviews. If you've never been here before, I perform consistent automotive light tests to help you make the best purchase decision. As I mentioned, this is a light that many of you have asked me to test, so here it is. Hikari is a pretty well-known name. I think just about anybody who's asked for LED headlight recommendations on forums or Facebook groups has received a suggestion to check out Hikari. I previously tested their Eye of Megatron LED headlight in my 15-way LED headlight shootout I did on my other channel a couple years ago. That's at injasonsgarage.com, but I'll put a link to that video in the description. You should check it out. It's a good one. So that light is now known as the Hikari Thunder. They use the Eye of Megatron on the packaging of many of their other models now. The Thunder performed well for the price point, but not as well as I'd hoped. Let's see if it's any different for the Hyperstar. At nearly twice the cost of the Thunder model, I hope so. Now, like all my headlight videos, I'm going to do an introduction and unboxing, go over the published specifications and cover some of the features, and then I'm going to test the brightness and light pattern for both projector and reflector housings and see how it performs. Let's start with that unboxing. It appears to be pretty thorough, frequently asked questions, warranty information. Let's take a look at the main unit. Let's talk about the published specifications. 32 watts each, 10,000 lumens each, color temperature of 6,000K. The chip is an Acme X chip. I believe this is proprietary to Hikari because I haven't seen it mentioned on other lights. It has an IP rating of 68 and an hour rating of 50,000 hours. It does have an adjustable collar and it is friction fit. It does have a fan for cooling and it has an internal driver. Now, of course, as you can see, it's obvious this is an all-in-one unit. I'm seeing a lot more LED headlight manufacturers go to the all-in-one design as technology improves. Now, in my book, the jury's still out on if that's approaching the level of heat management and efficiency of the style with an external driver. We'll find out. The warranty is two years, and the price at the time of this video, before any discounts, is $84.99 per pair. So here's my initial observations. It looks like what you'd expect from a premium priced light. Good quality materials, feels very solid. It's pretty beefy and has a well-designed heat sink. As you can see, it is square and not round like most designs. Has nice details uh, like the black chrome finish, the Hikari name cut into the side here, as well as the Hikari logo on the fan cover. Now, I'm not a fan of friction fit collars because they just come out like that and they use these little rubber pieces here to hold in place. I prefer a light that locks into the collar or locks the collar onto it, but friction fit is a common type of collar assembly and seems to do okay. I'm also questioning the fact that it says DOT right here. You'll see lights often that have the DOT marking like this one on it, or they say DOT approved in the marketing copy. That can be a little bit misleading because... The United States Department of Transportation is not an approval agency, and they don't approve products. What they do is issue safety standards, including the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 108, which applies to transportation industry lighting. Now, except in fog light or off-road use, replacing factory halogen headlight bulbs with LEDs in the U.S. is not currently legal, nor is it a DOT-approved practice. I mention this in the description of every video I make. And I also mentioned important notes on aiming headlights, how to ensure you pick the right headlight for your application, and so on and so forth. So please read the description for important information about that. But if you're watching this, you're more interested in seeing how these perform, so let's test them. Here's what I use for LED headlight testing. For projector testing, I made a test rig using a 2017 Toyota Camry H11 headlight projector. And for reflector testing, I use an H11 headlight from a 2018 Ford F-150. I use these specifically because they are among the best-selling vehicles in America for over 20 years and are the most common on the road. I'll power the lights using a benchtop power supply, and I'll position the lights hotspot onto a lux meter that is 20 feet away, mounted on my garage door. I'll record the initial brightness and then again after 27 minutes to document how well the light manages heat. I use 27 minutes because that's the average commute time in the United States. My tests aren't for lux number accuracy, but for comparison to a stock H11 halogen bulb, which measures 725 projected lux and 910 reflected lux using my test method. 
Different tests in different environments will give you different results. So if you want to do the same tests of your own, I list all of the equipment I use in the description of this video. Now before I get to my testing, I want to mention that if you found this video helpful, valuable, or entertaining, please visit my Patreon page. For as little as a dollar, that's just one buck a month, you can support this channel and help me make more videos like this one for it. And I'd also like to take this time to thank Dan S. for being my very first Patreon supporter of this channel. It really honestly makes me feel great knowing that you're getting value from my efforts of testing lights like these so you can make educated light upgrade purchases. Thank you very, very much, Dan. I really appreciate it. Now, let's see how the Hikari Hyperstar performed in my light tests. In my projector test, it came out at 1,188 lux, 463 over the halogen 725 lux. After 27 minutes, it retains an above average 88% of that light output, making it 1,045 lux, 320 over halogen. Now, overall, this doesn't seem to quite match the public specifications, at least not according to my tests. Let's keep going, though. Looking at the projector light pattern compared to stock, it's pretty uniform overall. It does have a high cutoff line compared to the hotspot, which means it's not projecting the hotspot as far down the road as what it should. The emitters are on the wider side compared to the halogen filament and some other LED headlight upgrades that I've tested. And I think that that is contributing to that gap between the cutoff and the hotspot. Let's take a look at the reflector. In my reflector tests, 2020 lux, 1110 over the halogen, 910 lux. And after 27 minutes, it's reduced to 1,770 lux, 867 over halogen. Looking at the reflector light pattern compared to stock, it is a little wavy along the cutoff, but overall does a good job at controlling the light. As I mentioned, there is a published rating of 32 watts per light. I observed 30.4 in my test setup. For heat management, after 27 minutes, my laser thermometer recorded 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I do find that on the impressive side because it's below average for the lights that I've tested. And most all-in-one style lights like this one typically run a bit hotter than ones with an external driver. And some LED light fans run at the same speed non-stop starting immediately when you supply them with power, but this one spins up gradually over time. And I think it did a pretty good job. I was keeping my eye on the light drop and it hit that 88% light retention rather early in my 27 minute test. And then it leveled off and stayed there for the remainder of the test, which is a pretty good thing. This does have very good heat management. The brightness output of this wasn't quite what I was hoping for. It was right on average for the lights I've tested so far, but as I always say, there's a lot more to choosing the right LED light other than brightness. I also look at engineering materials and quality, especially when it comes to the fan and heat management, which is definitely needed for an all-in-one style like this one for longevity and efficiency. I do wish it had a lower cutoff in relation to the hotspot and a more secure collar. As I mentioned earlier, I'm seeing more and more manufacturers going to the all-in-one design, and I kind of wonder if technology is going to evolve enough to where all LED light upgrades will be able to have an internal driver and still be able to retain a high percentage of light output over time, as well as manage the heat well. This LED light is going in that direction, but I still think there's a little bit of room for improvement. So does the Hikari Hyperstar live up to the hype? Well, that depends on your level of hype about it. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments. I'd really like to hear them. If you want to give the Hikari 2022 Hyperstar a shot, links to where you can buy it are in the description. You can also find a link in the description to a free spreadsheet that I update with every video release that shows the specs and results of all the lights I've tested so you can compare this light to the others in one easy view. And once again, I've got a Patreon page, so please check it out to learn how you can support this channel and help me make more videos for it. Thanks again to Dan S. If that's not something you want to do right now, though, at least subscribe and hit the bell and let me know you want to see more because I've got more videos like this one on the way, at least one released each week on average. And if you have a suggestion on what I should test in the future, please leave a comment and I'll check into it. As always, thanks so much for watching and I hope this video helps you to find the right lighting upgrades for your needs so you can enjoy your car more. Keep your headlights aimed, drive safely, responsibly, and respectfully. <laughs>